This Susan Kehika Manenos. Ay, 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 yeah. You know, politically, we have been here before. Yeah. Those are before a political situation that pitted the ancestors of Susan Kehika, or rather the ancestor of Susan Kehika, with the ancestor of Lee Kinyanjui in a political duel. And in that contest, if you're interested in knowing what happened, the Kehikas won hands down. And they bullied yeah, and ran over the ancestor of Lee Kinyanjui. Of course, the ancestor of Lee Kinyanjui later on got the better of the Kehikas. Yeah, but that was many years later. <laughs> I know you're wondering what I'm talking about, at least some of you. Yeah, but stay with me on this show and find out about that super fascinating fact. Okay? Karibu sana to this show that sheds light on what everybody is talking about. And I will especially focus on the impact it may have on August 9th yeah, and how people vote in Nakuru County, the fastest growing county in the entire region. Yeah, a great county, a county of the future. By the way, weekly intelligence briefings number 77 is being released in the next few hours. And you can take advantage of a very unique special offer yeah, available only strictly for 48 hours where you can pay only half the price of the latest special offer. It is a special offer within a special offer. That's right. Check out the amazing prices on your screens right now. Only $749.50 for instance for 6 months subscription to WIB. Yeah, and you get the book Dark Secrets of the Kenyan Presidency. Rush. Make sure you beat that deadline. We're living in very hard times. So I'm trying my best also to be realistic. Yeah. So humor me. Karibu sana. And as usual, enjoy yourself thoroughly. Mambo ya Susan Kehika, the Nakuru Senator, na Farouk Kibet, <laughs> the Chief Handler of Deputy President William Samuel Ruto, haya maneno ni mazito. And on today's show, I want us to go step by step and dissect this, analyze it very deeply so that we understand because there's some very serious possible consequences going forward into a general election you see although this channel is famed as the channel that helps sell a lot of bobgon <laughs> we do not produce videos like popcorn yeah. we like to analyze something very deeply so that if there's an issue we've analyzed we do it thoroughly yeah. and of course our mantra is always something that will stand the test of time and something that will stand the test of time must be first and foremost based on truth yeah. it must be accurate so get that cup of tea or your favorite drink Relax and let's analyze this very deeply. Now the major issue here, let's start with that, is that it seems that the gubernatorial race for the next governor of Nakuru is going to be Moto Kuliko Pasiamaka. From my research on the ground so far, 
it seems that the two front runners for that seat are incumbent Lee Kinyanjui and Senator Susan Kihika. Now for those of us who are students of history, this is most fascinating. Simply because we have a political contest on the cards that would have been unimaginable. A daughter of Kemani Kehika versus a son of Daniel Torotich Arapmoy. Oh yes. You see many people have got it mixed up. Kehika Kemani was one of the people who made Moy's life a nightmare in Akuru. He harassed Moy. He bullied Moy. Despite the fact that on paper, Moy was supposed to be the second most powerful man in the country. But in reality, it did not work like that. You see, Nakuru was Moy's hometown. He couldn't avoid being there. And it was also Kehika Kimani's hometown. And I can tell you very many stories that would just blow your mind. Including the fact that people like James Mungai, who was then the regional police boss for the Rift Valley, would ride on a horse into Nakuru town and cause a traffic jam. I kid you not. Cars would have to stop and let James Mungai pass riding his horse slowly. <laughs> Kehika Kimani and James Mugai were bosom buddies. Yeah, and many times they were together. When they jeered Moy, bullied him, made fun of his Kalenjin accent, etc. etc. And that's why when Moy took over power, he lifted Kehika Kimani's arch rival in politics, a man called Chotara. Karaoke Chotara. Let me just leave that story there. So what we have here is a battle of all battles, indeed the mother of all battles, between an offspring of Kehika Kimani, who was very prominent in Nakuru politics for decades during the Jomo Kenyatta presidency, and an offspring of the late Daniel Toretich Moy who ruled Kenya for 24 years. So those of us who are looking at it from a historical point of view, that is amazing, super fascinating. But the issue on the ground right now can be summarized in a very simple question. Will the problems, the domains within UDA, yeah, that are indeed very serious, between Susan Kehika and D.P. Ruto's right-hand man, Farouk Kibet, a factor in her bid to be the next governor of Nakuru, especially against such stiff competition as a man called Lee Kinyanjui, yeah, the current governor, still very popular on the ground, has the full backing of the Azimio political juggernaut behind him. Indeed, what will happen here? Yeah, that is a political contest many are looking forward to. But then we don't want one of the contestants to be crippled in some way yeah, and reduce the fun and excitement and tension of this political contest. Now prepare to be shocked. Developments on the ground and all that is happening around this battle royale that we're expecting suggest something that will blow your mind. Let me just summarize it. It suggests that in the end, yeah, it is highly likely that we will never see this contest. Oh yes. Let me explain. Let's start with the good Governor Lee Kinyanjui. Towards the end of March, Lee Kinyanjui made a move many Kenyans missed. Yeah. He left his political party, yeah, Ubuntu People Forum, and rejoined the Jubilee Party, Uru Kenyatta's Jubilee Party. 
on the surface of things this doesn't make sense because ubuntu people's forum is also in azimio put yourself in his excellency kinyanjui's shoes for a minute you are the incumbent governor you're going for re-election why do you need to cross over to a party where there's already a crowded field to run for governor on the jubilee ticket yeah why do you need to cross over and face the risk of being eliminated in the nomination stage does that make sense to you why not just stick with ubuntu people's forum because after all it's within azimio it's one of the parties in azimio okay now let us speculate a little yeah that is allowed in analysis many times speculations end up being the truth yeah admittedly at other times it remains just that but humor me let us speculate but speculation based on experience and solid facts on the ground now one of the reasons why somebody would do this is if there's a deal in place they are approached on hmm, kando by the azimio high command and they're told we want to do one two three so you need to move into jubilee because this thing will not work if you're in ubuntu okay now the next question is what would not work in ubuntu that can work in jubilee this will shock some of you yeah but many of you are my regulars and many of you who follow me on our telegram forum will already know where i'm going with this now it is in the public domain everybody should know that because the presidential candidate of azimio comes from the odm party one of the major partners in azimio the deputy president will come from which party yes you're correct jubilee and we know you cannot be the governor of a certain county in kenya and at the same time deputy president of the republic of kenya that can't happen yeah so let me just leave that speculation there yeah simmering okay i'll come back to it in a later video okay please humor me there's a reason why i'm doing it like this because never forget we are in politics and even an analyst must understand that they're analyzing politics and therefore they're in politics okay let's cross over to the other side now the misunderstanding the beef between susan kihika and farouk kibet is serious enough it is so serious and we've seen plenty of evidence to suggest this that everything in the relationship between susan kihika and the uda party which also means the uda party leader has changed and you need to know something else and this is privileged inside information okay this problem has been simmering for a long time yeah, and the problem is between uda members from the mount kenya region and uda members from the rift valley yeah a lot of uda members from the rift valley are very uneasy do not trust members in the party that hail from the mount kenya region yeah there are always accusations and counter accusations that they're spies some of this has come out to the surface yeah like susan kika for instance has recently been accused of being a jubilee mole within uda and this problem may not just be entirely the fault of the players yeah, in this drama actually it has got a historical origin yeah this way i emphasize so much on history let me illustrate this one day you decide in your house you already have a pet dog a chihuahua yeah nice cute little dogs my kids have one 
gifted to them by their late mother yeah, shortly before she passed on. So you have this pet dog and you decide you want to keep a cat in the same house. No, you cannot go into this kind of arrangement pretending that all will be well. Pretending that there is no reason why there should be no peace in the house. You can't do that. Because you know the history of dogs and cats. <laughs> they don't live together. They hate each other. Yeah. They don't understand each other. And it's not that dogs are bad. And it's not that cats are bad. It's just the way things are. And you have to accept. It is very gallant and noble to want to bring together people. But in doing so, you must start by facing the reality and putting measures in place that will address that reality yeah, of the historical background of these two peoples or two animals that you are trying to bring together under the same roof. That really summarizes very well what UD is facing here. Now, to understand what I'm talking about, it is important that we examine very quickly what unfolded during the Moi days. Moi had his inner circle, all from the Kalenjin community. The communication between them was so close that it was almost instinctive. A member of that team did not really need to spell out anything for the rest to understand. Even just a look or an expression and everybody in the room would immediately understand yeah, what they are saying. And on those occasions, when this inner circle were with Moi, when Moi was meeting other people also close to him, yeah, who are not from the community, what used to happen is that the non kalenjins felt left out every time. Now, there's another very deep historical origin that I want to talk about. And we saw this very clearly during the 2007 2008 unfortunate tribal clashes in our country you see Kalenjin boys when they go through circumcision rites are trained they have ways of communicating somebody can make a noise yeah, several hundred meters away and everybody in the vicinity who hears that sound knows exactly what they are saying yeah, for example, it could mean, let us gather together to defend ourselves. Yeah, that's just an example. And within seconds, minutes, you'd find a very large group of young men gathered together where that sound came from. This is unique in this community. This kind of way of communicating. So let's come back to UDA. What used to happen during the Moy days is being replicated. The deputy president has his inner circle, yeah, the innermost of the inner circle, and of course they all hail from his community. And these people who are not within that circle, have for a long time been feeling left out. Now it is human nature when you feel left out of something. How do you respond? You draw closer to those you have more in common with. Yeah, for example, the Mount Kenya people within UDA drew closer to each other. And of course this affects the other side within UDA. Because it is easy for them to start suspecting that these people should not be trusted. What are they discussing? What are they huddling so closely about? You get my gist? That has been the problem. And it has just been made worse when this Susan Kehika allegation of uh, being a spy, a mole for Jubilee, has emerged. Yeah. It is like scratching a wound which is already there. Yeah, it causes a lot of pain and chaos. And that is precisely what is unfolding within the UDA party. So the question here is how will this affect Susan Kehika's bid to be the next governor of Nakuru? And is it possible, despite her denials, 
that she could actually end up being on the ballot on an independent ticket yeah an independent ticket still allied to UDA but an independent ticket you see Susan Kika had a very interesting tweet the other day yeah she was referring to a man called Moses Kuria and she said in the tweet kumbe my brother I'm paraphrasing kumbe my brother you so far and of course, she must have been referring to Kuria's insistence since day one that the Mount Kenya people should join UDA not as members but as an affiliate party, an affiliate Mount Kenya party where they all belong, yeah, joining the UDA fold. So that in case anything happens, they can still fall back on their party yeah, instead of just joining UDA. Because when you join UDA, if something goes wrong, there's a fallout. What will you do? Yeah, you have no else to land. Of course, you can land as an independent, but that is not the best case scenario. Yeah, because this is politics. It's much better to be in a party that can also back you in case there's a misunderstanding, in case there's a problem like this on which occurred with uh, Farouk Kibet. What this tells us in black and white. Because politicians will never tell you their mind. They'll never tell you the truth. Yeah. What this tells us in black and white is that Susan Kihika is regretting the fact that she is in UDA without a backup plan. She's regretting that she's in UDA yeah, as an individual rather than as a member of a political party, a Mount Kenya political party, yeah, like Moses Kuria is. Bottom line, although anything can happen, you cannot rule out the possibility that Susan Kehika could be on the ballot as an independent, yeah, but still a firm supporter of William Samuel Ruto. Now, the situation has been worsened by the feeling of UDA members from the Kalenjin community who are very sure that Susan Kehika has been trying to play both sides. Yeah, what that means is that they are sure Susan Kiheka at best is a double agent. Yeah, of course she has been called a mole. But they are sure best case scenario she is a double agent. She is playing both sides. Now last night on our telegram forum you must join if you have not yet joined. That is the Kumekucha place for breaking news. The Kumekucha place where you'll be up to date, Kabisa. There's so much interesting stuff there. I'll leave a link in the description area below. Please join today. You'll never regret it. So last night on our Telegram forum, I was having a discussion with the support of UDA. And they kept on using the word contained. Susan Kihika has been contained. Now I found that very interesting. Because it's precisely the same word, yeah, my informant, yeah, on what is happening within UDA, used. They said, Susan Kihika is no longer trusted, but she has been contained. They used exactly the same word. And I started looking at this member, yeah, with different lenses. I, of course, wondered. How deep an insider he is. Yeah, because he's using exactly the same language used by somebody else. From deep inside UDA. So that's the problem. So folks, what will happen next is unpredictable. Yeah, but here, kuna maneno. And these issues will not just go away. Yeah, they have to be sorted out. Yeah as soon as possible. Others they could impact and affect the campaigns. You see, UDA already has a very huge psychological advantage in Nakuru. Because all their candidates are women. Now, personally, I myself prefer women candidates. They have a better track record in running political offices in the country called Kenya. Whatever side of the political divide they are in. Yeah. Anybody fighting for a better Kenya will tell you 
that we need more women in political offices in Kenya, not less. Yeah, we already have the women reps, yeah, which many men are not happy about. Yeah, but we need more women because where there are many women, things will run better. Things tend to run better, at least in Africa. Take Rwanda for instance. Rwanda's parliament is mostly women. Look how efficiently things are run in that country. Yeah. Corruption is almost non-existent. Yeah. Anyway, those are just my views. But we have a problem here. Because UDA could lose this very huge psychological advantage they have. And indeed a perception advantage they have. Going into the general elections. And they can't afford to. They just can't afford to make that loss. Because Nakuru is major. Yeah. In the last elections, there were about just short of a million registered voters within Nakuru. We don't have the figures, the current figures. But I would not be surprised if that figure has almost doubled. Yeah, we may be close to 2 million. Those are a lot of votes. Yeah. And any presidential candidate would be throwing away a golden opportunity if they ignored Nakuru. Or decided to take Nakuru casually yeah, in the bid to be president. Folks, let's keep a very close eye on Nakuru County, Susan Kihika, and Lee Kinyanjui. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.